for here in the second half. Well, you need to start the second half with some momentum, particularly if you're Florida State, because the momentum went to Miami at the end of the first half there. Time of possession is all in Miami's favor. The thing that Miami did was just self-destruct in that first half. They let Florida State make a couple plays on them. Work done, made the big 80-yard run. But so far, it's an even game as far as I'm concerned. Let's go back down to the uh, sideline. Michelle Tafoya standing by with the Florida State head coach, Bobby Bowden. Coach, you jumped out to a 17-0 lead. Miami responded. How do you get the momentum back in the second half? I don't know, but that's what we've got to do. The way you get it back, we could get this opening kickoff and drive it for a touchdown. That'd be the way to get it back. Uh, if not, they've got it, and we, it's, it's got to be some kind of a score, either a turnover or something, to get the momentum back. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Hey, thank you very much. All right, Michelle. Florida State will have the wind in the third quarter. Miami for the final quarter. And Miami has some kind of history against the Seminoles when it gets down to fourth quarter comebacks. Well, all those old ghosts that Florida State has in that closet, they want to get rid of those ghosts and destroy the idea that they can't win here in the Orange Bowl. And of course, Miami's trying to keep those ghosts alive and trying to play on everybody's mental psyche as to whether or not they can continue the dominance here in the Orange Bowl. Gaetan's kick to Preston at the 18 and out to the 25. Time of possession was more than double for Miami in the first half. And Ryan Clemens threw for over 200 yards. Half of Florida State's 160-yard total came on the 80-yard run by Warwick Dunn. And, and I think that Miami clearly showed that they can beat the Florida State defense deep. Busby has three receivers to start out the second half. Dunn sidesteps the defender and out for about five. Terry, you focused in on Thad Busby before the game, and look at his numbers here today. Well, thus far, he's not played well, and he had one good drive during the game, but, but you'd have to say that the, the Bryant Clement right now has played better in the first half than certainly Busby has. Second and five, Busby flings it, man open. At the 43, it's Green, E.G. Green. Played pretty well on that play. Busby did. Well, it's just so critical when you have the football going in this direction. you got to make the most of it here in this quarter. That went for 26 yards. E.G. Green in the slot is a dangerous receiver. He runs down the field and then just fakes outside and comes into the middle, and Busby hits him with the ball. Green's first catch of the day. He was a 1,000-yard receiver last season. Set the school record. First down, Busby, good time. Now a run with it. First down and all the way to the 26. 18-yard scramble by Thad Busby. Stop on middle. Thad Busby is not really known as a scrambling, running-type quarterback, but makes a good decision here, comes off the play fake, doesn't find anyone open, pulls it down, and then runs physically. Right here, he, he punishes the Miami defense, puts his pads down, and punishes them. That's what you want out of your quarterback. You don't want to get him hit all the time, but you want him to be physical. Busby with four seconds on the play clock. Off the audible, now fires right side. And intended for Cooper. Starks on the coverage. Good looking receivers at Florida State. Although the big uh, game today belongs to Miami's wide receiver, Yatiel Green. When you put a quarterback into the shotgun formation, you're putting the game into his hands. You're making him your premier player. And Bobby Bowden told me yesterday that Busby is a much better player in the shotgun throwing the ball than he is underneath the center. Today, Bobby's mixed it up with both. From under center this time, second and ten. Big hole for Dunn. And finally, Dennis Scott has to ride him down, but it's a first down for Warwick Dunn, and he's over 100. He has just set the school record for most 100-yard games in a career. He was tied with Greg Allen 
coming in, but that's the 17th time in his career he's gone for over 100. Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator at Miami, said we've got to stop 28 in this game. We've got to stop him on the ground and as a receiver. Warwick Dunn has not been stopped on the ground today. He's been very impressive. First down from the 14. Dunn up the middle for about five. Bobby Bowden just told Michelle Tafoya coming out of the locker room, we need to take that first drive and take it all the way down the field for a touchdown. And they're certainly showing signs of it right now. They certainly are, and that's what you want as a coach. The opening drive in the second half oftentimes sets the tempo for how your team's going to play in that half of football. Dunn replaced by Rock Preston in the backfield. Second and five. Give. Take the give, and Busby kept it and sacked by Kennard Lang. Well, he didn't fool Lang. He uh, whenever you play against, whenever you play against Bobby Bowden in the goal line area, he loves to run bootleg passes. Miami was well schooled. Number 96, Kennard Lang played that just as the coaches taught him. So now it's third down, third and 13. From the 17, a three receiver set. Busby, left side, Preston. Big hit, but he bangs away for the first down at the three yard line. The hit, had they sustained it, would have kept them short of a first. They would have been trying a field goal. He broke away from Earl Little. Hard piece of running by Rock Preston. In big plays, players step up and make great plays for you. That's exactly what Rock Preston does with this little swing pass from Thad Busby. It's, it's well covered, he makes a play, and then right there, he breaks a tackle on number four, Earl Little. Flag down, the play was whistled down. Busby on the keep, but they uh, have a motion penalty against legal procedure penalty against Florida State. They'll have a goal to go situation. First down from the eight. Five yard penalty. Okay. Winning his team in the uh, last 10 years. With 100 wins, Florida State winning the national championship right here against Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, 1993. And right there, 16 win. Nine consecutive top five finishes. Think about that. Amazing. That's a dynasty. That's what that is. Preston. Drove for a couple of extra yards with Michael Lawson on his back. You can tell how deep the Florida State team is when, when you you can go and take work done, rest him, bring in Rock, Rock Preston. You can you can alternate receivers in there. You get E.G. Green, Wayne Messam, Peter Ward, Andre Cooper. They've got so many players to go in and out of their lineup. Michael Lawson shaken up and, and no help him to the sideline and bring in Marvin Davis. Yeah, you're talking about Florida State's high finishes the last nine years. 2-3-3, 4-4-2, 1-4-4. That's not a phone number. That's their final ranking in the last nine years. Amazing. Second and goal. Running play again, Preston in zone touchdown. You talk about it, you talk about a drive that set the tempo for Florida State. That was a drive. Come out with the opening kickoff in the second half. Establish the run and the pass against this Miami defense and take away all of the momentum that Miami gained with that field goal right before the end of the half. Well, Preston earned the touchdown, the right to find the end zone when he broke free on that critical third down swing pass, his first touchdown of the season. 
And Bentley makes the point after. 75-yard drive and 10 plays. The coach got his wish. 27-16 Florida State. Back in front by 11. Miami about to touch the football for the first time in the second half. Florida State's best drive of the game, resulting in the Preston touchdown. Benton will down it. The Preston touchdown, though, really set up by this effort on third down. Well, it's such a key play because he's got to get to the five-yard line. Right there, he breaks the tackle by number four, Earl Little. And then here, he spins off two Miami defenders for the first down. Look at his reaction here. First touchdown of the season for Rock Preston. He knows. Clement and Miami struggled going in this direction in the first quarter. He's coming out firing. Lost it. That's Carlo Joseph for a gain of about three. Ryan Clement with over 200 yards passing in the first half. And they had some big strikes in that uh, opening half. And right there, the long ball, he's had a couple wide receivers open. He'd add to that total if he hadn't missed them. Second and seven. Ferguson looked outside, broke it back inside. Gain of three, third and four. Vernon Crawford and Byron Capers combine on the hit. Crawford with the big blow in the first half that knocked the football free from Ferguson. Wisconsin beating Ohio State 14 to 10 in the fourth quarter. We've got two of the top four teams in the country trailing right now with Arizona State also behind against, or Arizona State behind UCLA. Third and four. Clement going to run for it. I don't know. Had to get right to the 30. I think he's a little short. I don't think he made it. Any piece of the football touching the 30, and it's a first down. Mickey Andrews says, watch that spot. He's not happy about it. So maybe they marked it a little more forward than Florida State anticipated at first. There's never been an opposing coach that ever thought we got a good spot like that. You just don't believe that way. But Clement makes a real effort here. I think he's short. They gave it to him. Well, they did. No I wonder Mickey was mad. I'm with Mickey. That's not only uh, good enough to keep the football for another few plays at least, but you keep the football out of the hands of Florida State with the win in this quarter. Yeah. And that certainly proved to be the tail in the first half, the win. The team with the win was the team that dominated. Again, 40 of the 43 points in this game have been scored when they're going in Florida State's current direction. Timeout called by Miami. They have a new set of downs midway through the third quarter, down 11. I'm out here, Terry. Well, it looked like Miami had too many players on the field. Tony Gator right there is going to leave the team area right there and sprint to the sideline and boy Ryan Clement he was upset having to take this time out he came over to the sideline and let his feelings be known and, and even to compound their concern just a second ago Yatil Green suddenly uh, rushed to the locker room after that incredible first half where he caught two touchdowns first and ten Clement never a chance that's Peter Boulware. What happens to you when you try to run bootleg type action against Florida State, the pressure is just too much. Peter Boulware coming in from the top left right there. The quarterback never had a chance. He went right around Curlin Blaze, the left tackle. Mickey Andrews says, all right, that's sack number four. 
for the game, number 26 on the season for Florida State. Second and 18. A draw, Ferguson. Got a big chunk back out to the 36. It'll be third and four. That's a nice call by Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, not trying to get it all back at one time. All of a sudden now, he took the pressure off Ryan Clement by putting him in this down and distance situation as opposed to third and real long yardage. Only the second back over 2,000 yards in his career. Second to Otis Anderson, all-time rushing list at Miami. Third and four. Three receivers set. Clement going long for Gator, and there's a flag thrown. He was held up by Shevin Smith. And he was. He definitely grabbed him. Shevin Smith definitely grabbed Tony Gator going deep. Sometimes when you're a defensive back and you know you get beat, you want to go ahead and grab them. And that's exactly what happened. Tony Gator right there, number 22, gets grabbed right there by Shevin Smith. And sometimes when you're a linebacker trying to play coverage like that, you got to go ahead and do it. And in this case, the safety man. Smith will come out of the game. Holding defense. 10 yard penalty, previous spot, first down. And Sean Hamlet replaces him, who was really sick this morning, fighting the flu. That's a lot less costly than giving up a long touchdown pass right there. They said they were giving Hamlet uh, IVs and everything just to try to get some nutrients into the system before the game, and uh, he's seen sparse action today. But Miami had it second and 18, and uh, again, able to somehow find a way to get a first. Well, the draw play and then the pass interference right there, holding. 6.45 to go, uh, third quarter, and it's Ferguson. Sean Hamlet makes the tackle. This is a tough Florida State defense to try to run on, but Miami has been persistent in trying to be balanced and trying to establish a run. Their running yardage isn't impressive because of the sack totals, but they have been able to be able to dictate the rhythm of the game and also decide pretty much when they want to throw and when they want to run and stay out of those long yardage situations where Florida State's at their best. Second and eight. Ferguson for no gain. Darrell Bush hit him first. That is the 20th carry of the game for Danielle Ferguson for a total of 52 yards, 20 for 52. He was averaging six yards a pop coming into the game. This is a dominant Florida State defense, and Darrell Bush, the leader of that defense in the middle, is a tremendous player. He might be the first Rhodes Scholarship winner for Florida State in football. He's gonna be a candidate, and he's a great student and a tremendous young man. He's got the highest academic average on the team, three years running. Third down and nine. Miami's still hot on third down. Let's see. Gator pulls it in for the catch and the first down at the 38. Tony Gator. A senior who had five catches on the year coming in. Four of them had gone for touchdowns. Florida State changes up their coverage. Sometimes they're pressing, sometimes they're not. In this particular case, number 15, Mario Edwards falls to the ground, and it looked like Tony Gator, it looked like he cramped. It looked like he had a bigger play and he cramped. Well, he's still in the game. That was his first catch. It went for 15 yards and a first. Clement up top in traffic. He was trying to hit Gerard Daphnis, the backup tight end. Tony Gator was wide open. Watch Tony Gator at the top of the screen. This is a quick little counter type pass, three step drop, fake the run. He's wide open right there. He wanted that ball. The tight end was totally covered. 
Second and ten, five minutes remaining third quarter. Florida State 27 to 16. Ferguson getting no room to operate at all in this quarter, this series. Daryl Bush again. Met him right away. Talk about Bush. He had three straight semesters with a perfect 4.0 GPA over the summer. He backed off to a 3.95. Must he have been lifting weights or something. He no, could only bring home, only could bring home an A minus in real estate finance. Uh, they love that guy at Florida State, and I can see why. Playing there, his nose is all cut up and stitched up every week, three weeks in a row. You got to like that in your linebacker. Third and ten. Clement overthrows Benton, and now a decision for Butch Davis. Too far for a field goal into this win. I think you punt the ball here and play field position. You've got the wind against you. You punt and play field position. That's what Butch Davis is going to do when you have a great defense like Miami to go for it on fourth and ten against Florida State is low percentage. Crossland to kick. Up into the air. Will Miami cover it? They got Brooks down there. He makes the catch at the three, pinning Florida State way back. Well done by Crossland and Brooks. Florida State football from its own three. had a touchdown against Virginia Tech when Syracuse snapped that 13 game win streak. I'm getting the feeling that the Big East could come down to November 30th Miami at Syracuse. Don't forget though you got Virginia, Virginia, West, Virginia. West Virginia in there and, and also Virginia Tech's not dead. There's a long season left. Florida State's worst starting field position. Four minutes remaining third quarter. Dunn gets him out of the jam a little bit with six. Let's go back down to the sidelines, Michelle. What's the word? Well, at halftime, Coach Bobby Bowden told his Florida State Seminoles that most of the scoring in this game has been done in the west end zone. That's the end zone they're headed to now. So he wants his team to take advantage of this third quarter and do as much scoring as possible, Jim. That's Warwick Dunn. And they'll get a chance to move the chains with that carry, Michelle. Out past the 10. Near the 17-yard line. By the way, you teal green. You see Dunn shaking up a little bit. Green was dehydrated. He was taken to the locker room. It looked like it could be a leg injury or something. Just cramping up. He was dehydrated. He may return. First down, Florida State. Ball at the 16. Rock Preston again replaces Dunn. Got in on the quarterback, but he released it in time to Green for the first down. 18 yards to E.G. Green. Kenny Holmes made a great defensive play, fighting off two blockers, number 90, right on the right of your screen, fights both blockers off, and then Thad Busby, he, he delivers the ball, but he pays a price right there from Kenny Holmes. He wants to make sure they know he's as good as anybody at Florida State playing defensive end. First down, given Chase is lying, oh, what a sack. Back at the 20 yard line. That's more than a 10 yard loss. Kennard Lang 
It was Holmes and Lang who were trying to say we're as good as Bullware and Wilson. <laughs> well, those two defensive ends, first 90, Kenny Holmes, now 96, Kennard Lang, they stepped it up right there, particularly in view of the fact that Florida State had been pinned back on the three-yard line, and now big loss right there by Kennard Lang. A 12-yard loss, the second second for Miami today. Second and 22. Wayne Messamin is a receiver. They counter. Preston. Near the 30. It'll be third and uh, third and about 16. Orange Bowl just packed. With this great rivalry. Florida State has not won against Miami here since 1984. Five straight losses. But leading today by 11. Trying to do a little bit more business in that west end zone before they switch ends at the end of the quarter. Third and 15. Looking long and incomplete. Wayne Messam was covered by Dwayne Starks, and Miami will get the football. It was still a good series, though, for Florida State, considering the field position they started the drive in. They're at the three-yard line. At least now they've got the ball out to approximately the 30. It gives them a better chance to play defense now when they have to kick the ball away. Sean Liss, Florida State's most decorated punter since Rome Stark. Only his second punt of the game. A flag down. The left tackle for Florida State's punt team just rocked out of there just a little early. And when he rocked, they called it. be on the headphones with Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, and uh, Bobby Bowden comes in for an added word. Well, Bobby always has something on his mind. He's active with that offensive team, and he 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 knows what those quarterbacks see from ground level. He's as good as anybody in the game at that. Talking to that quarterback, telling him what he needs to do. This with no pressure. What a boomer! It's all the way to the end zone. That's a 76-yard punt. I think that gave you a pretty good idea of the force of these wins. Well, and how important that 27 additional yards of field position was for Florida State with that little drive they had. They changed field position by making that first down, getting a little room. Terry, next week we'll be up in Gainesville for number one Florida hosting Auburn. The Gators cruising today past LSU as Danny Warfel threw for three touchdowns. And the Auburn Tigers come in with Damian Craig. Auburn leading right now over Mississippi State. They're ranked 18th coming into the weekend. That's Daryl McMillan running the football. Miami has to say, if we can get about one first down here, we can run the clock down into the fourth quarter and uh, switch sides and have that win. An official timeout on the field. I think they Florida have a state player a, a little shaken. Canel Spain is shaken up and they want him off the field. Number 96 there. Spain, who was uh, active in that first quarter, will sit out uh, for a few plays anyway. And the clock is uh, set back into motion. Second down and eight. Clement comes it short. That's Magic Benton. 
And looking for a little magic on that right side when he cut back over. But that's a first down. Magic Benton hasn't been hurt from much today. He starts in motion right here. Just catches a little pass from Ryan Clement, but Clement took an unbelievable hit from Greg Spires after the throw. But Magic Benton is one of the most dynamic young players that they have at the University of Miami. Look at the hit there. Just the second catch for Benton. It goes for a first down. McMillan tries the right side for short yardage. We're inside of a minute to go, third quarter. Miami just has not been able to penetrate this Florida State defensive front running the ball. They just have not been able to do it. They've eaten up the clock some, and they've made some, some decent gains, but the Florida State defense has just been too tough up front. Rushing yards for Miami today, a mere 31 yards. Total yardage almost even. When you look at that passing yardage for Miami, you've got to you've got to question whether or not they need to throw it a little more often now, even though they're going to throw into a fierce pass rush. Gator with the catch on second and eight, and he is about a yard shy of the first. Well, that should run the clock down to the fourth quarter, and Miami is anxious to switch ends. They have come back in the fourth quarter six of the last nine times when they trailed against Florida State entering the final quarter. And they get that big win. That's the end of the third. Florida State 27, Miami 16 will return after this message and a word from your local station. You're looking at live Doppler radar, only on WCTV, Thomasville, Tallahassee. Miami says the fourth quarter belongs to us. But they trail by 11 as we start the final 15. Even the fans agree. In the history of this rivalry, there is so much fanfare about the fourth quarter. 19 times. Overall, as you see that stat right there, it's even more supported by the fact that 19 times Florida State has led going into the fourth quarter in the history of this series. 13 times they've lost the game. Well, they're trying to bring those ghosts out, but what, what a fumble that was. Well, let's see if they rule it a fumble. They do. On third and one, Bullware with the recovery as Clement tried to sneak it for the first. Casey Jones, the center, along with Ryan Clement, they just mis-exchanged the ball. Oftentimes, in third and very short yardage, the center will be lunging, moving forward. The quarterback needs to ride with him a little bit. In that case, Ryan Clement didn't. That's what happened. Huge play by the Seminole defense. Miami tried to just find a way to survive that third quarter into the win, and they open up the final stanza with a turnover. Must be hand off to Dunn. Dunn for nine. A lot, of, a, lot, on attack. A, a lot of people wonder, you get into the shotgun, Bobby Bowden gets in the shotgun, it's a passing formation, but he gets in it so he can run. He passes so he can run. Some people run so they can pass, Bobby Bowden does the opposite. Second and one, there's the sneak. The one that Miami was looking for. First down, first down Seminoles. We've got an update coming your way. Let's send it back to New York and Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, who says Notre Dame doesn't have an air game? Watch Ron Paulus find Malcolm Johnson. 45-yard touchdown pass. Fighting Irish are back on track, beating Washington 54 to 20. Paulus threw three TD passes. Quickly back to Jim. All right, Pat, I know you can't believe that Washington gave up 54. First and 10, and Dunn loses a yard. I really can't believe Washington gave up that many points. They're one of the better defensive teams on the coast. In this game, Florida State 
picked off a pass early. It led to a field goal. Then they returned a fumble, 54 yards by Shevin Smith. Later, an 80-yard explosion by Warwick Dunn, 17-0 after one. Switch ends. Miami scores on a touchdown pass. The first one, the Seminoles yielded all year. They made it 17-6 after a botched extra point. Second and 12, and Busby left side. There's Warwick. And out of bounds. It'll be third down. Third and about six. Bentley, after a nice drive, kicked from 32 yards, 20 to six. Miami with a touchdown. Clement, five-yard toss to Green. A done fumble led to a field goal, 20 to 16 at halftime in the third. Florida State's first possession led to a Preston touchdown. And Florida State will not get the first. Done. Stacked up by Starks. And it'll be fourth down from the 25. Miami could not afford to surrender anything more than three after the fumble. Well, they'll look back on that exchange problem they had on third and a foot, and that'll haunt them for quite some time. Bentley, two for two today. Good from 48 and 32. This one, 42 yards. I hate to say it, wide right. <laughs> so Florida State comes up empty after the turnover. Miami football, early fourth. Niagara Falls. There are a lot of interesting things to see in this country. On your right, you'll see the marriage of the body and the chest. Nobody on. And a right, well hit, but right at Jermaine Dunn. Plane is down, and so is Dennis Riddle at the 22. Eric Riddick, the free safety redshirt freshman from Richlands, North Carolina, came up to make a nice play. The flag is down at the 20 of the NC State play. 427 left, Cincinnati trailing 24 to 10. Due to contract, the now be switched via to our college football today studios to our coverage of the Pac-10 game between Arizona and USC in Los Angeles. Can't believe it. 6-11, the time on the clock. 17-12, Alabama with the lead in NC State. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Saturn. A different kind of company, a different kind of car. Adidas. And by Burger King where you can get your burgers worth. Yatil Green is back after missing most of the third quarter, dehydrated. And Bentley, who was eight out of nine in his uh, career, playing at the Orange Bowl, misses today for the first time. They need Green back after a blockbuster first half where he had 148 yards receiving two Florida, touchdowns Florida State had a hard time matching up against him I look to Miami to get the ball to green first down here they are going for him right away long ball and oh it almost came back into the arms of green Troy Saunders already with an interception today was looking for a second one Teal Green has been open most of the day, but in this particular case, he's covered like a blanket by number four, Troy Saunders, who almost gets the interception, and then Green almost gets the rebound. And with Saunders down on the field after going for the pick, it would have been another six for Green. Second down and ten. On the counter, Ferguson exploding ahead. First down after the 38-yard line. 
How about that defensive series for Miami that uh, led to the missed field goal by Florida State? Well, they did a great job keeping Florida State off the scoreboard. It cost them about 15 yards of field position. More importantly, it took two important minutes off the clock. Miami right now, the clock's the enemy for Miami. It's the ally for Florida State. Ohio State has moved back in front, 17-14 over Wisconsin. First down, Ferguson cuts back to the middle. And out to the 46, a nice glide that time. He's over 70 yards for the game on 23 attempts. Danielle Ferguson is one of those guys that has the eyes. He doesn't always run to where the coaches say the hole is. Right there, he cuts all the way back against the fast flow defense of Florida State. That enables him to pick up that valuable yardage. The one fumble, run back for a touchdown in the first quarter. Second and four. Will stay on the ground for a first down at midfield. So I got uh, Florida State a little cross. They think they're going to throw it. And Ferguson now getting some room for the first time today. It's good signal calling. And previously, when Ferguson popped that draw for 10 yards on second and 10, Florida State thought they were going to throw it. They ran the draw on him. Eleven thirty remaining in the game. Chambers and Green, the two receivers. Ryan Clement, who had a huge second quarter, now going to the air. Has his target, 41-yard line. Got Teal Green's first catch of the second half. You know that Ryan Clement loves having you Teal Green back on the field. The big physical receiver simply can get off the Florida State coverage. He pushes him deep, turns to the inside. The ball is well-timed completion but every quarterback pays a price against Florida State right here he's getting roughed around Ryan Clement forward progress to the 41 a gain of nine second and one Clement got one-on-one -on -one coverage right side looking for magic James Colsey on the coverage James Colsey, number 20, gets matched up against Magic Benton. Benton is the fastest wide, one of the fastest wide receivers on this Miami squad, but the ball is just a little bit underthrown and thrown outside. Benton has got to leave himself more room to work on that sideline in order to make that a completion. He got too close to that sideline. Third and a yard. This is where they turned it over on the sneak to start the quarter. Same situation. Ferguson has it, slicing up the middle at the 35. You got to love, you're in the fourth quarter. You've got Miami, Florida State, and I can hear the pads all the way up here. They're popping away both that defense of Florida State, that big offensive line of Miami. Those fullbacks and linebackers are all going at it. I love it. Ferguson finding the flow on this drive. He's got 30 yards rushing. They go back to him. Hard to bring down, down to the 32. Florida State with wins in the Orange Bowl Classic against uh, Notre Dame this past January the 1st and twice against Nebraska since they last beat Miami here. In 84. And the first back to back wins they're seeking since 78 79. And in talking to Bobby Bowden, he really didn't think the Orange Bowl necessarily was bad luck for him, but more just playing Miami in the Orange Bowl. That's how he kind of related it to me. Second down and seven. Clement over to Ferguson. Oh, breaks the tackle. And got back to the line of scrimmage. Vernon Crawford 
got to him first and somehow Ferguson was able to wriggle his way out of it. Danielle Ferguson is a complete back. He can run with the ball, catch, and also block right here. He just made several Florida State players miss him so he could fight that ball as far forward as possible. Third down has been the key so far today for the Hurricane offense. Time and time again, they've converted. Third and seven. Eight and a half remaining. Renard Wilson adding to just adding to that total with his fifth well team's fifth sack of the day Renard Wilson right there on the right of the screen locked up against Blaze Curlin Blaze 79 Florida State's defense has been dominant because of Peter Bulware and Renard Wilson, they put the pressure on you. Fourth down and ball spotted at the 39 and Miami's going for it. With 7.48 remaining clock running, fourth and 13. Boy, how critical that sack was, put them in such a long yardage position. But I think Miami's got to go for this. Got to give their quarterback time. Clement dumps it short. That's not enough for the first, is it? No, he's short. That's Gerard Daphnis, and he was trying to lunge for it. James Colsey was holding on, and he's tackled at the 27. Florida State takes over on downs. You've got Daphnis at 260 pounds, the tight end dragging across the middle, and James Colsey at 170 pounds trying to get him down, and sure enough, he did. Florida State with the football and an 11-point lead. Halfway through the final quarter at the Orange Bowl. Daddy? I have your son. Give me $2 million. UCLA came back. Skip Hicks scores from two yards out for the Bruins. The point after missed. They're in the fourth. UCLA going for the big upset, 34-21. UCLA raced out to that 28-7 lead in the first half. Skip Hicks, yes, two touchdown runs for UCLA. And we will have give you an update if we can. Elsewhere, it would be up about two yards shy of the necessary yardage. And Florida State, 11 points in front. Seven and a half remaining. Ron Dugan's in as a receiver. They're going to their main man, Warwick Dunn. Good piece of running for about eight. And we have another update. Back in New York we go to Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, Ohio State goes to 5-0 and on the season as Demetrius Stanley scores on a 48-yard TD pass from Joe Germain, Ohio State's backup quarterback. Stanley finished with 10 catches, 199 yards, one TD. A Jim Nance kind of day. Ohio State wins. Well, you have to say this, though, about the Buckeyes. It had to be a mental letdown kind of a day coming off of Penn State and Notre Dame the last two. They were huge favorites against Wisconsin and survived today. John Cooper's got to be excited going 5-0. and May have the best team in the country. Second and one, Miami was offside. He felt like before the game that uh, Thad Busby was the key player for Florida State, but in many ways, he, they haven't had to rely on him as much because of some of the big plays. How about his performance, Terry? Well, I think that's correct. Uh, because of the big plays, things have happened in the game that haven't made Busby carry the whole load. Warwick Dunn's 80-yard run is an example. The fumble by Miami that was scooped up for the touchdown. Those have taken the pressure off Busby, but he's thrown the ball hard and well today, and the big thing is he's avoided the interceptions. He hasn't made big mistakes with the football. These three all lost at the Orange Bowl. Pennell, Charlie Ward, Brad Johnson back here in 90. 6.20 remaining. You set it down. Dunn keeps getting good yardage on first down. And that was a run of five. Warwick done now with 145 rushing for the afternoon. Boy, he's, he stepped up today. 
he has he has really come forward in this football game and remember we talked at the, during the telecast that the team that has controlled the ground game they're the ones that have generally won this game with only one exception low rushing totals back in 92 second and five first thing ahead and he's about a yard shy it's done again Miami defense must come up with a stop right now. There are two scores behind with 5.15 remaining. You know, there's, a, there's been a lot of key plays in this game, but you go back to that fourth down Miami just had and Colsey making that play against the big tight end, Daphnis. There's none any bigger than that one. Butch Davis encouraging his defensive unit. One play, he says. Get us the football back. You've got to get the ball back right here. Third and one. It's done. And he has the first. Remember, Miami only has two timeouts. They had to burn one earlier when they had too many men on the field. Right there, what a critical first down for Florida State. Florida State's been able to move the ball on the ground much better against this Miami defense than any of us anticipated. They've been able to run the ball. Coming into this game, the Florida State offense has been very much maligned. I think the reason when you get a player like Warwick Dunn that can make those explosive runs for you, and probably that Florida State line has been a little underrated. They lost 11 offensive linemen from that team this year, I've never heard of a team losing 11 offensive linemen and play like they can play. First down, Busby in no hurry. With one on the play clock, he takes the snap, gives it to Dunn for a short yardage. Five straight carries for the Heisman candidate. You got to have his name in there. With Danny Werfel, Orlando Pace, Troy Davis, and others. Peyton Manning. Well, Orful today, three touchdown passes, one interception. That's just another day walking in the park for Danny Werfel. What do you think right now? Well, you know, Orlando Pace might be the best football player in America, but it's hard to win it when you play offensive line like he does. Generally, it goes to a guy like Werfel or Davis or Warwick Dunn, someone that touches the ball all the time. This is Rock Preston. Breaking free. Down to the 10-yard line. Earl Little saved the touchdown. Rock Preston with some huge minutes filling in for Warwick Dunn today. That was a 34-yard run. If it isn't Warwick Dunn, it's Rock Preston. Backs make you miss or they break tackles. Right there, there's a broken tackle by Rock Preston. And he has all the speed and all the skill that a Warwick Dunn has. He'll be the starting tailback next year. Preston out, Dunn back in. Three minutes remaining. Ball at the 11. Done. Look at him fighting for the goal line. And another nine to his total. Right now, the Florida State offense is starting to rip this Miami defense. Miami knows that they're going to have a hard time winning this football game, and Florida State smells it right now. They want to get into that end zone and put to rest the myth that they can't beat Miami in the Orange Bowl. It's off field, baby. It's off field, baby. We got two home field. No camel stand in the Orange Bowl. We got two home fields now, baby. Every two of Troy Saunders says we have two home fields. <laughs> Kids are crazy. They love it. Well, they love this stuff. Two minutes remaining. Busby. They could get the first without necessarily getting a touchdown. It was second and less than a yard. There's a flag now. You know, Bobby Bowden said to me yesterday, Jim, when you and I talked with him, he said, 
You know, the measuring stick after the first half of the season is Miami. That's the measuring stick. Everyone measures us against Miami. We have to find out if we belong in the elite of the country at this point of the season. Then the second half of the season, they play that, and the measuring stick is Florida. Bobby Bowden has to beat Miami and Florida every year. That's why his job in the state of Florida is the toughest one between Miami, Steve Florida, Harris, and Florida half State. Half go, Tyler will give him a first half. No arguing with that, Terry. Well, Wyoming's a, about to assume the title of the school with the nation's longest win streak. First and goal, clock running, 145 remaining. Seminoles about to put away Miami. Busby over the top, ball's free, look out, Miami comes out of it, and they say touchdown. There's a signal for a touchdown, Busby broke the plane. What? Holy <laughs> smokes. What if he had not broken the plane? Look at Bobby Bob. <laughs> that Busby right here, he's got to just get the ball across the plane of the goal line, right there, clearly. he. Breaks the plane, touchdown. Good call by the official. The ball popped free off of a Miami helmet. You can, can you imagine? You can laugh that about going it the now. other way. <laughs> you can laugh about it now, but they wouldn't have been laughing had it been a little different. He was a good foot across the plane, and Bentley's extra point gives Florida State the 34 to 16 lead. They 56 to 13, but the story of that game, Craig James, was that Danny Werfel picks up more points for the Heisman. Well, he picks up more points from you, that's for sure. The guy had an awesome day. He has man-to-man -man coverage, tight, no pressure from the defense on the LSU's line. Man, it's cakewalk. That's pitch and catch at floor. Three touchdowns, 273 yards. Should we mail it into him? No, no chance. Orlando Pace is the mailman. He steals it, gives him the wrong letter, and it says Pace on the ballot. Okay, wait another week, Danny. Back to the game. Put <laughs> <laughs> a stamp on it. I think we actually have uh, uh, at least a month before we have to drop those in the mail. Well, I hope so. I don't want to vote today. You get to vote for the first time. First huh? time ever. I'm excited about it. Well, the last coach to beat Miami two games in a row before today. This will get Bowden two straight wins against Miami. But prior to that, Terry Donahue, 1985 Fiesta Bowl and the season opener last year, 31-8. to eight. We didn't want to play him very often in between, did we? <laughs> Why would you? Nick Williams fielding the kick. And just 119 remaining. about Miami's possessions in the fourth quarter when they got this uh, wind at their back. They had the one play to start the fourth quarter where they fumbled it on third and one and then just one other series before now. Yeah, you, you wonder about that fumble. Had they not fumbled and been able to maintain that drive third down and a foot when they fumbled the ball. Another Seminole sack. Three of them will share it. This is when it's at its toughest, when you're playing Florida State and they know you're in pass situation. It doesn't ever get any harder than that on an offensive line because they just put their ears back and keep coming. Clement in Miami, no hurry now. Resigning themselves to the fact that the Orange Bowl advantage over Florida State about to come to an end. Magic Benton trying to get to the sideline to stop the clock, unable to do it. And a timeout call, timeout called by Miami. 
timeout called by the Hurricanes. Bobby Bowden, 25 seconds away from probably the second most satisfying celebration at the Orange Bowl, only beaten by his national championship win. Honda invented the ATV and an over Florida State just wore Miami down in the second half, outscoring the Hurricanes 14 to nothing after halftime. Wow. Bobby Bowden, do you think he's excited about this win? All those heartbreaking losses. I know the pain of those losses. This guy is as excited probably as he's ever been. He just ran down to the uh, Florida State fan area and tossed his hat up into the stands. He'll be fighting for that thing up in there now. <laughs> Ferguson on a draw play on third down. Tackle. And Miami will get another snap. Remember, the winner of this game has gone on to win the national championship five times in the last 13 years. Does that mean it's a great omen for this Florida State team? How about ending it with an exclamation point, a sack of the quarterback. In fact, Clemen may have been hurt. Clemen was hurt on the sack. Bobby Bowden looks over. Clement now up on his feet. He appears to be fine. Auburn and Florida next Saturday here on CBS for Michelle Tafoya, Terry Donahue, Jim Nance saying so long from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Huh? 35 34 lead Sun Devils have won nine of their last 10 overall. Meanwhile, in the game many people have been paying attention to in Florida, Florida State, third ranked in the nation, leading Miami now by 18 points. Warwick Dunn has that 80 yard touchdown run. Miami has that 11 game winning streak, longest in 1A in jeopardy of coming to an end. Chuck. Haven't had your fill of first quarter. He takes this handoff. This guy has about four extra gears, folks. 80 yards and all. No one will catch him. And that put Florida State up 17 to nothing. But the Canes came back in the second quarter, 20 to 6 now. FSU leading third and goal for Miami. Ryan Clement goes back and finds Jatiel Green for the touchdown in the corner of the end zone. That made it 20 to 13. But FSU would wind up on top, 27 16. Miami driving, but they fumbled a the snap from center. And the Knowles go on to win it for Bobby Bowden, 34 to 16, to stay undefeated and set up that November 29th battle with number one Florida. Should both teams remain unbeaten, Miami only the third loss of the Orange Bowl in 74 games. And in beating Miami, the Seminoles and Bobby Bowden finally get even. In the 90s, in previous even years, FSU has been 4-0, gone to the Orange Bowl and lost to Miami. They lost in 88 and 86 as well. They weren't undefeated. Today, a sweet reversal of fortune. F FSU wins over the Hurricanes at the Orange Bowl for the first time since 1984. Steve Spurrier. This rivalry with defense is what set the tone on this afternoon. To the Orange Bowl for the highlights of Warwick Dunn and company. First quarter, FSU up 10-0 and Dunn breaks free. Warwick Dunn. A lot of Miami shirts, a lot of speed, but they're not going to catch 28. 80-yard touchdown. Florida State goes up 17-0. Miami gets closer, but... Florida State still wins this game by 18. I mentioned the defense. Six sacks in all. Reynard Wilton had three. Miami held to 42 yards rushing. Thad Busby come, becomes the first Florida State quarterback to beat Miami in his first start against the Canes since 1989. And Peter Tom Willis. We were worried, I mean, because we've had trouble down here. I mean, they they came back on us before in the fourth quarter and late in the ball game. And it, it, it's tough. I mean, we got to be, we had to be focused. The defense did a really good job. And if they, if they keep up the way they're doing right now, I mean, we'll, we'll end up in the Sugar Bowl at the end of the year where we want to be. I probably had better games, but I guess I got much more emotional tonight because we actually beat Miami in the Orange Bowl because of the history of the mistake about it. First time Florida State has beaten Miami in back-to-back -back games since the end of the 70s. And you see in the first quarter, those two Miami turnovers and 10 points really became too big a mountain to climb. The other Speak thing about the Orange Bowl. Well, don't you think the Hurricanes also have a bit to do with the seminal drought? They've been pretty darn good. Well, today, not the smoke in the tunnel nor anything else was going to keep the Knolls from victory. Big play number one, Daniel Ferguson fumbles, and native Miamian Shevin Smith picks up the ball, and he's gone 54 yards to the zone. Two Miami turnovers early gave FSU 10 points. His teammates are going to talk to him, though, about that running style. Big play number two, Warwick Dunn finds a gaping hole, and he's loose in the secondary. This is the longest run in Dunn's career, 80 yards. 
Knowles led 17-0 at the end of the first. Warwick rushed for 163 yards in the game. The second quarter belonged to the Canes. Ryan Clement to Yatiel Green, 31 yards for the score. It looked like he was out of bounds, but the ref said, it's a touch. Then Clement and Green hook up again, this time from six yards out. The Canes converted seven of nine third down conversions in the first half. They went to the break with the Knowles up 20 to 16. The second half was all Florida State. Watch the effort by Rock Preston after the catch. He breaks the tackle by Earl Little, picks up the first down. Then, why not? Give it to Rock and let him finish it off. That kept a 10-play, 75-yard drive. Of the Canes' nine wins against Florida State since 83, six times they've come from behind in the fourth quarter. Not today. Renard Wilson with the big sack there, his second of the game. For the first time since 84, FSU comes out victorious in the Orange Bowl against the Canes. The final 34-16. Our own Tom Block was there to see it. Wayne, it took Florida State 12 long years to quiet the Orange Bowl, but today they finally did it. Leading the way, quarterback Thad Busby, who did something the five previous Seminole quarterbacks could not do. He beat the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl in Miami. I mean, if you come down here and beat Miami at their place, it's a really big booth, obviously. I mean, it's going to help us out throughout the season. And, I mean, we got a big one this week. I mean, we got a little redemption. So, uh, you just want to keep taking it one game at a time? This is real, real big because we actually came down in Miami in the Orange Bowl and beat these guys. And I think I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. All the trash talking that I've heard over the years. I think tonight was a little payback. I think we brought pressure today when we had to and make the plays when we needed to. And uh, I feel we stepped up. They like Coach Bowden said, he gave us a challenge. Big time players make big time plays in big games. And we pulled through today and made it happen. The best feeling I've had since I've been here, um, it feels like we won a national championship. Finally get a monkey off our back. People may say that this wasn't a great team, but I've heard people say that's the best line they've ever had. Uh, they've, they've had as good or better skill players than they've ever had. So uh, to come down here and beat a team like that, in, in their own home, hometown, I mean, that's huge for us. It says a lot about this team. It really does say a lot about this Florida State football team, which goes to 5-0 and and now has a week to rest up before trying to get revenge against those Virginia Cavaliers. In Miami, where Florida State wins at 34-16, to Tom Block, Tallahassee's News Channel 27. Wayne Messam did some gardening. FSU lays the Orange Bowl mystique to waste. Reporting from Miami, Randy Rudis, Channel 6 Eyewitness Sports. All right, thanks, Randy. A big day in Miami, you bet. Did you know that, of course, the first win in the Orange Bowl against Miami since 84? Never have they come down to Miami 4-0 and and come out a winner. Previous times was 90 and 94 when they were undefeated, and they lost. Back-to-back -back wins, well, this was the first time since 1978 and 79. And Bad Busby, the first junior since Eric Thomas. You guys remember him? He started as, as a junior back in 19. 84. Excited about that? Well, let's talk about... 25. He is to the 35. He's to the 40 yard. 35, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Warwick down to the 10. 5. Touchdown, Florida State. 80 yards. A marvelous run by Warwick Dunn. The Bobby Bowden Show is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Always a winner. Always Coca-Cola. Bowden Show, the news is good. Florida State goes to Miami, the Orange Bowl, and Coach, maybe a lot of ghosts were put to rest in that victory over the Miami Hurricanes. Well, it's been a long time since when we've been able to beat them there. And so, buddy, it, 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 it's very fulfilling. And uh, our kids played as, as just an excellent football game. Uh, we got on top of Miami quickly because of mistakes. But uh, they didn't lay down and roll over. They came back and had us on the ropes at the half. We had momentum the first quarter. They had momentum the second quarter. We got momentum the third quarter. They tried to get it back in the fourth, but uh, we made just enough plays to keep them from getting it. It was a great, it was a great game. It was a rock'em, sock'em football game. Coach, uh, I think both teams, they just laid it right flat on the line in that football game. Well, they really did, and, and the stadium is something. They, that, that is a home field advantage of playing down there. That's the loudest place I ever heard in my life. And but the Seminole band was there, and the and the, and the Seminole fans were there, and and uh, we had a lot of alumni and boosters there. I was glad to see. If you love great college football, you had to love that ball game. And we've got all the exciting highlights coming up on today's show. Plus, a great moment in Florida State football with Burt Reynolds and Vic Prenzi. Don't go away. win the toss we defer to the second half we're gonna have the win there back in the first yeah half. and the team that had the win in the back scored all the points but we kick off 
We kick it into the end zone, and uh, they try it magic bit and brings it out. We stop them inside the 20. They mess up their first play, but number 47 there, Vernon Crawford. Uh, would you say Texas City, Texas? Texas City, Texas. And here's, boy, what a hit by uh, Wilson, by Renard Wilson. Renard Wilson and Pete Boulware just had a tremendous... Now, who's that putting on the bus there? Is that... No, it might have been Audrey Wards. Wards was putting the pressure. Yeah, and here's Dunn on a trap play here. Our offensive line really came of age. I, 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 I had no idea they could do what they did. Because you, you're playing against the number one defense in the nation in Miami. And yet we were able to get some yardage in there. 200 something yards rushing. You 222. Know, 222. And, uh, boy, this kid here did a good, great job for them. Boy, did he improve there. He missed that when he overthrew. Put a little pressure on him. He overthrew. It's Torres Sanders from Miami. You don't, and boy, did you see Bush, Ooh. collision with Bush, knock both of them out. Knock both of them out. Uh, 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 both of them, I think, eventually came back in the ball game. but I, I guarantee you Daryl Bush is about as tough as it gets. Look at Khalid Abdullah here, our fullback, making a key. Busby uh, hit him on a key pass there and got a first down. And but they stopped us, but Bentley came in and kicked a 40, what, eight? 40, 48 yard field goal here, career. 48 best. yard field goal. I tell you, he kicked good. I mean, the one he missed in the game, I mean, I think if the wind had to move the ball, it would have been in there, too. He kicked them all plenty far. They've turned it over. We produced points. Defense there. You know that dad gum number 86 right there? Spain, Pinnell Spain. Pinnell Spain. You don't hear about him as much, but I tell you, he is having a tremendous year for us. There is some real fine tackling. 47, Vernon Crawford, Bush. Uh, Demetro uh, Stevens was in the middle for uh, the injured Bush. Yeah, that's right. Look at here. His, oh, uh, yeah. Chevin Smith picks up a fumble. I think Vernon Crawford hit him here and knocked the ball loose. Watch it. We'll show it again right here. Watch see if number 47 knocks this ball loose. Chevin Smith from Miami. Watch number 47 coming from the weak side over there. Hits that shot right there. The ball. And this kid here is alert and uh, picks up two blockers there. Old Samari Rowe, who is from Miami. And I believe that's Hamlet there. Sean, Sean Hamlet. Sean Hamlet, who was sick. I didn't think he was going to be able to play. And then Bentley kicks the extra point. We take a 10 nothing lead. Remember, Gene, I kept talking about last week it was going to be a low scoring game unless there was a lot of mistakes or unless somebody made some big plays. And that's exactly what happened. But boy, is that uh, Renard there? That's Renard Wilson. Renard Wilson, did he have a famous day? There's old uh, Canal Spain there. You can see the excitement of that defensive football team. Lamont Green played a good ball game. Demetra Stevens came in when Bush got hurt and play with there's renard wilson there and 90 even corey simon who had been injured came in and played greg and, spires. And, and julian pittman julian pittman played well and and greg spires and here comes number good gracious look at that great move there by dunn but the, the the great thing was the blocking watch if they run it again i want you to watch the fullbacks block khalid abdullah as he blocks the linebacker they get caught him in a blitz but our offensive line, Jimmy Higgins, really needs a pat on the back. There's old uh, Pierce. Saw, watch this. Watch the fullback block. See him stand oh, him on his head. Yes, sir. Stand him on his head. But everybody blocked well. I done jukes this part. He jukes that part. He he, he juked those two guys. Then it was a race. That kid catched him on the outside there. That young man said a fly. He's only caught done. Uh, Starks number 23. Yeah, and he caught uh, Rock later on in the ball game. But and he just might have dove a little too soon because he was gaining. But uh, uh, Dunn, that's just a great run by Dunn, and that's why he's a great player. 163 yards, there were 80 of them, and a big touchdown. Seminoles are up 17-0 now, Coach. I would not, have no way figured that we could have got, that he could have got 160-yard running against Miami. He is a marked man, Virginia. Oh, yeah. I mean, wherever he is, there, that's the first thing they say, we're going to take you away. And uh, they tried to take him away, and they couldn't get the passer. Now, the wind at the back of the Hurricanes here, and yeah, this was now, a disputed crawl. Now, they got the win, right and they get, a, they get a touchdown pass here. Yeah, the, 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 the film when they showed it, he stepped out. But uh, the, if that fisher don't call it, it's a touchdown. 17-6 now, and the Seven. Hurricanes get a little momentum going. Oh, they get some momentum going. But here's a great play by Thad Busby. Boy, aren't you impressed with Thad's coolness and poise? He really directed the offense. You know, the one thing he's done, he had not hurt you. No. You know, usually a young quarterback will hurt you. There's Pearsall making a catch there, and uh, and uh, he had a good week of practice. I had a feeling he was going to have a pretty good day. Look at here. His, uh, is this Rock? Rock. Mm -hmm. Well, Rock came in and just... Instead of, you know, putting your second team in and then and, and going downhill, you put your second team in, a team in, and he picks you up. Because that's exactly what Rock did, Saturday. When he came in, he just spurred you on. Chad Bates played great in there at guard, along with Marcus uh, Long, along with Kevin Long, Todd Fordham, Trey Thomas came in and did a no, good job. Yep, and then uh, Walter Jones played well out at the other tackle position. Even Jason uh, Whitaker played real well. 
There's Sue Hall, yeah, my secretary, up with her husband. She Hall, loved that boy. Sitting up there. We had a great turnout. So I saw uh, Larry Strom and his wife there, Gene, at the ball game. It's always good to see them. <laughs> but anyway, look yeah, at the pressure. Yeah, we been getting some good pressure there. Now watch, watch, look, look at Dimitri. See number forty, Lamont Green, uh, fifty-two, Demetro Stevens. Put this, put this hit on him. Watch his tackle here. Samari Roll gets his, gets underneath, and hits like you're supposed to hit. You know, I, I hate to see these get backs go out and wrestle like a guy down by the neck. He got his pads underneath. That guy don't weigh about 260. 260 you know. is got, that he fullback. He weighs 260. Nick Williams. And, and Samar don't weigh 100. He weighed, what, 172? 173 when he's pounds when he's wet. That's exactly right. <laughs> but that was a great tackle. Now, here we should have, we had everybody standing around here doing nothing. Uh, we should have stopped that one. That, might, was it might have, that wasn't a fourth down, was it? Third no, long. Third long. That, how many kids are playing so good and then give up a cheap one? We were like up 17 that. nothing, then 20 to 6, and now all of a that's sudden that's Miami's 20, back 20, they, to four, 20 to 13. And, and they're they, going to get And they got them. the mo momentum. And, and uh, no, yes, right. Oh. Then we fumble here. We fumble. Gosh, we fumble, and boy, now here they come again. But we owe them the three, I believe, Jim. Yeah, closing two. Boy, minutes. that was a big one. They could have tied it up right here, but our defense is something else. They are something else. The ki guy kicks a field goal here. Now he cut it to four points. When we go at the halftime, we tell our kids, you know, if they don't score now, we're going to win the game because we've got a four-point lead. And so our defense shut them out in the second half. 20 to 16. And if you have experienced the Florida State-Miami series over the years, you know that that lead is not safe. The second half is going to be just as exciting as the first. So... Between now and then, we're going to hear from Burt Reynolds and Vic Frenzy and relive a great moment in Florida State football. Uh, here are they players. often say the most important possession of a ball game is your first uh, possession of the third quarter. Yeah, they kick off and uh, rock fest. They kick it short, rock fest, and gets it decent field position. Yeah, we told our kids to have, but I think that you could take the ball and stick this one in and get the momentum back. We might can win this darn game. And, and of course, you got some good blocking in there. It's done running up there, and there's old. Wayne Messam from Bellglade. I bet all his folks were there. Great play here by Busby oh, yeah. to uh, E.G. E.G. Busby, Busby. I tell you, I, that guy, he impresses me now. He flung that one. He's done something quarterbacks haven't done for Florida State now. Look at this run here. Look at here. His back-to-back -back plays, by Oh, look at this now. That, that was what? Tw was that 20-something yards? 19 yards. That was 19 was yards, see? Longest of his See, when, when, when Busby's in there and you've got the shotgun, he gives you another runner. That's like having two runners back instead of only one. And there's a good example right there. They're so busy trying to keep up with with Dunn, and then then Busby breaks it. Now he's now you got him. You got him guessing there. See, and boy, here's a real fine run again by Dunn, and uh, just a little bit better downfield blocking out there, man. We could break the dead gum thing and get it in the end zone. But that's some good uh, run. There's 78 there. Oh, uh, Marcus, Marcus. Uh, Long, of course, long. yeah, but uh, more offensive line they play. So look at the protection we got. Look at the protection. Oh my goodness! Now here's a great, maybe one of the best plays of the day. Is watch this. One Rock, season. Rock made a first down out of this thing. I, I think we had long yardage. I feel like we got penalized or something. And he makes a gosh, and what a, watch him here. Watch Rock, Rock. See, that's, that's why the team is good right now. Fullbacks blocking good in there, but. When you take Dunn out, Rock Preston comes in there and just does big things, you know. And uh, Bullock had offensive the, line. Uh, the block yeah, watch this. Look at your OL. Walter Jones just, just nails his man, you know. And uh, who's that? That's probably Mar Marcus Long again in there. Again, Chad Bates, Kevin Long, Marcus Long, Walter Jones, Trey Thomas, Todd Fordham, Jason Whitaker. Uh, to name a few. Jeremy Britt might have got in some. We thought we stopped this guy here. Ball was by loose. the time the ball got spotted, it was a first down. We thought we had it. I think I can show you the ball on the ground here, on the other side of that line. Yeah, looks like it's down. By the time they uncovered it, it was on the other side. But I, anyway, we won the ball game. Boy, here comes Another those two side. defensive ends. Is that number 58 there? That Come looks, like, that looks like, look at, look at Boer. Goodness gracious. Bullaware and and uh, gee, they really they really got to that quarterback. Now that quarterback did a good job. I'll hand it to him. Seven sacks. He came to play. We got a bunch of sacks. We was rounding his face all day. He still threw touchdown passes. He still he converted third down a lot of times yeah. against us. You know what? But uh, boy, our, de our defense really played well. I just couldn't be more proud of them. Daryl Bush came back in, played with a busted nose and. Knocked out and everything else. Corey Simon played with an injury. Uh, Andre Wadsworth from Miami, he was hurt in the first quarter. He kept playing. 
uh, Capers came off the bench uh, with that bad ankle and uh, this I'd, is a big play fourth and 13 they go for it and they yeah, come up just yeah. short by two I, two I yards think Bobby Hammond <clears throat> I think Robert. No, that's no. It's uh, that gum coach. That's another Miami. There's two Miami defensive backs. There's three of them. There's four of them. Four defensive backs, and they're all from Miami. You know. <laughs> we take over on yeah. downs, and this is the look Rock Preston drive. Look, look at Rock. Look at Rock. Boy, oh, he just look at him. I am so proud of him. And so now, now we now we put Dunn back in, and he takes it down about the three of three. Oh gosh, look at that, uh, that, that offensive line. There's old uh, Pearson, and Busby reaches over and, and breaks the play. Watch. He breaks them once that ball breaks the plane. It's a touchdown. What right there? That's a touchdown. Yep. Now they get they knock the thing out, and uh, but it didn't make a difference. And uh, there you go, 34 to 16, and uh, just a great job. I, I'd say the coaches, the assistant coaches, just did a great job preparing us for that game. Bobby, we saw the fans and the, we had the war chant going. The marching chiefs were playing. About uh, two minutes left to go in the ball game. You walked down to where the marching chiefs were and you threw a hat up there, which is uh, beginning to be... Yeah, if I could get close to them, I'd do it all the time. I'd not that way down to the end of the field. I can't hardly get to them. What a tremendous victory for the Seminoles. 34-16 to over the Miami Hurricanes. Now, coming up, an open date, and we'll talk about our next contest, which will be a homecoming show. Stay with us. Tom, can I make a suggestion? You're fired! <laughs> Welcome to eternity. Hmm. Heaven! <laughs> yeah. You know what's the hardest thing about making these golden plate commercials? Trying not to eat all these delicious golden plate potato chips before we finish up. Hey, give me some more of them golden plates. How far do you have to travel for the authentic goodness of corn? Only as far as the nearest bag of golden plate. Golden plate. It's where you find the flavor. It's here, Garnet and Golden, 50 years of Seminole football. Seminole fans will look back in amazement of where the program started and where it is today. From the hard scrabble turf of Centennial Field to today's magnificent Doe Campbell Stadium. From Don Veller's cockeyed tee formation to today's fast break shotgun set. Get the definitive history of FSU football on one video cassette. To order by credit card, call Simply the Best Sports at 1-800-529-4500. Also available at retail stores everywhere. Jimmy, today we're going to see some great works of art. A great example of unity and proportion. Nice use of movement, good composition. Say, now that's art. A celebration of color conveying size and strength of purpose. <laughs> Osmo's pressure treated fine from great southern wood is clean, straight, and backed by a lifetime guarantee. So remember, if you don't see Osmo's on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. The Seminoles beat the Miami Hurricanes back-to-back -back for the first time since 78, 79, a long time ago. Congratulations, Coach. Well, thank you, and we get an open date now, and uh, we need it. We got a lot of guys that's uh, beat up and injured, and maybe we can get them healthy again. And then, after the open date weekend, it's homecoming, 1996, and so there's something special about homecoming, particularly, Coach, when it's our 50th year homecoming. Well, when I tell you, and, and you're playing the University of Virginia, who is the only team that's ever beat us in the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's a great setting. And I don't think uh, many Seminoles have forgotten that uh, setback up in Charlottesville, so it's going to be an uh, interesting football game. Well, we sure better be ready to play because George Welch is one of the finest coaches, and he does a great job. Their talent level is picking up. It should be a great game. 34-16, Seminoles with Miami. Next time in two weeks, we talk about homecoming, 1996. Hope you can join us then. Good night. The Bobby Bowden Show has been brought to you today by Coca-Cola Glass that Miami had gained some of the momentum and that they must put together a solid drive with their first possession in order to hold off a huge Miami comeback. Busby will roll to his right, rolling to his right, looking to his right, throws it downfield, he's going to be saved. Cooper Green makes the catch of the Hurricane 43-yard line. Three wide receiver, look, here's the snap. Busby, play action, drops, looks downfield. He'll run the ball. Busby to the 40, Busby to the 35, Busby to the 30. Busby is hit and clamber to the 26-yard line. Blitz threatened, uncoming. Hand off.
handoff to Dunn. Dunn finds daylight. He is to the 20. Goes outside. He is to the 15, to the 14-yard line, dragging three Hurricane defenders with him. At the 17, third down and 13. There's a shotgun snap to Busby. Looking, Busby swings the pass out. It is caught by Rock Preston at the 10. Spins off a tackle. Rock Preston to the 5, to the 3, to the 2-yard line. First and goal. Rock Preston with tremendous effort. The Kings had him cornered. They had him on a jailhouse, and he broke free of a couple of them. And Burgess and Wimberly make the touchdown saving tackle. Rock was out in the flats and had a guy chasing him. I just had to throw it over his head to get it to him. And Rock made a great catch and a great, great run afterwards. It set up a set up a big score for us, and uh, that was kind of the the score that kind of took the momentum out of the game for them. Uh, they after the first half they pretty had, pretty much had the momentum, and after we scored that touchdown, I mean it, it took a lot out of them and a lot out of their fans, which which helped us throughout the game. High formation, Busby awaits the snap. Here it is. Hands the ball off. Rock Preston. Three, two, one. Touchdown, Florida State. They go right up the middle where Lawson had to come out, and Davis couldn't stop it. The Seminoles go down the field and score on their opening series of the third quarter. The Canes get a little help from the refs to keep their drive alive. Clement wants to throw the quick pass. He's going to run with the football. He is hit, hit, and he did not get the first down. Stopped at the 29. Depends on the spot, however. They're going to put that ball on the marker. He never got to the marker. Miami goes to the ground and through the air to move into Seminole territory. D stands tall and puts an end to the Hurricanes' charges. Pinned deep in their own territory, the Knolls know who can get them out of the jam. Pitch goes to Dunn. Dunn tries to go outside. Gets to the corner. 20 or 10. He's out to the 13, maybe the 14. They'll give him a first down run. Drop spins. Looks to it. He throws the ball. Got rid of it just in time. Caught by Green to the 34-yard line. Knocked out of bounds in front of the Hurricane bench. The Canes step up the pressure, and Florida State is forced to punt. Miami had the wind at their back and only one yard to go to keep the drive alive and start their fourth quarter come from behind win, just like so many past contests. If ever there was a time for FSU to make a big play, it was now. Here's Iron, and it's going to be the corner. Fumble, 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 football at the 41 yard line. Seminole say they've got it. It is, it is, it is. Florida State football. Peter Bowler came up with the ball. It was a bad exchange. Yeah, that was just great line play in the middle of the, the, the nose guard and the three technique, uh, pushed the quarterback back and I just jumped on the ball as a free ball and just glad I got on it. The Knowles can't seem to find the first down and FSU is forced to try for three again. Echoes of doom appear as Bentley's kick sails and all too familiar wide right. Clement and the Hurricanes had a now or never attitude. They were facing a defense that was on a mission. Knowles knew that Miami was down, 
that this drive was the time to send a knockout blow. Moving right, here's the snap, toss pitch, Dunn to the right side. Dunn looks for the hole. It starts over, gets to the corner, to the 45, to the 47-yard line. But here's the snap, toss pitch, goes to Rock Preston, looks left. Preston pops into the 40. He's inside the 30, to the 45, to the 20. Rock Preston is going to be tackled at the 10-yard line. Rock Preston to the 10. It's first and goal for this thing. Oh, they're going to say he's down to the 11-yard line. Fresh legs, Rick. You called it fresh legs. One second on the play clock. Here's the handoff to Dunn. We took a lot of time off the clock with that drive and uh, really ate the clock away that, that they were they were wanting to get back. So uh, that was a big play for us and uh, really got excited after that one. I think everybody in the in the stands knew that then. I mean, we had the game won and uh, it was just time to celebrate then. This victory for the Knowles was perhaps the most relieving in school history for a whole horde of irritating monkeys were at long last removed from their backs. The list of ejected chimps include the Canes' five-game winning streak at home, 16 years without a back-to-back -back victory over Miami, the first year starting quarterback jinx, and of course, a wide right Florida State kick that results in defeat. Man, I've never seen as many guys contribute to a game to win it. I mean, you know, the offense took that uh, 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 first that half kick off and took it, drove it, got momentum back. We never defense did exactly what we said to have. If they don't score, we win. Our defense showed them. But then I thought. Oh, For your best golfing experience, come out. Seminole Uprising would like to congratulate the players of the week. On offense, Heisman hopeful Warwick Dunn exploded to a season-high 163 yards on 22 carries. Warwick helped keep key Florida State drives alive and kept Miami defenders scratching their heads all day. Early in the first quarter, Dunn eluded the blitz and broke free for an 80-yard touchdown scamper. On defense, senior defensive end Raynard Wilson had a record-setting day. Wilson punished Miami quarterback Ryan Clement, registering four sacks, including a bone-crushing hit on the final play of the game. Raynard's first sack was Ron Simmons' career sack mark at 25. Once again, Seminole Uprising would like to congratulate the players of the week. On offense, Warwick Dunn, and on defense, Raynard Wilson. play mercilessly as the Virginia Cavaliers smugly charge into Doak Campbell after having stunned the entire nation last year by dealing the Knowles their only defeat in ACC play.